The views and opinions expressed by presenters and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Parasearch UK Radio or its affiliates and sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. Listening to Paranormal Concept right here on Parasearch UK Radio with your host Paul Brook. Good evening, everyone, and welcome to another Paranormal Concept show. And I'd like to welcome my co-host tonight, Kerry Greenaway. Hello, Kerry. Hi, Paul. Hi, how are you? I'm really well, thank you. How are you? I'm exhausted. Absolutely. Well, this is because you've been gallivanting all weekend. I have. I I went to the V Festival in Chelmsford. Um, You're just showing yeah. off. It was absolutely amazing. <laughs> yeah, get to get to linger and around. Um, yeah, I think it was busted, pink, and scouting for girls, and loads of other people I've never heard of. <laughs> <laughs> You're so hip. It astonishes I, me how hip you are. I, I am, absolutely. Um, no, I just, <laughs> I'm old. What can I say? I, I, they, all these new bands that come up, it's like, who are they? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, tonight, tonight's show is all about um, a TV series on Amazon Prime. It's called Ghost Dimensions, and we are joined tonight by its creator and star, Sean Reynolds. Hello, Sean. Hi there, you okay? Hi, I, I'm fine, thank you. Yep. Oh, big, good. big knackered, but absolutely fine. All wearing well, to yeah, go I've for been tonight. to the V a few times myself, and I, you know, I've not been for about two years now, but I really enjoyed it. You know, every time I've been, you know, yeah. like you, I don't know half the bands, but you know, I've enjoyed the uh, the festival feeling. It, yeah, it's drunk. all part of the atmosphere and just being there, really, isn't it? I suppose. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, uh, yeah it's awesome. Um, so tell us a little bit about yourself, Sean. Um, how did you get into the paranormal? Yeah, so um, when I, so if I go back many years ago um, and go uh, sort of to so an experience when I was a child, I was in bed, and um, my dog at the time, it was a border collie, was sleeping on the bed, and I woke up and this figure was on the bed in a lumber jacket. I could see this guy, you know, big guy, uh, sat on the bed, stroking the dog, and I was like, shit. And I was like, whoa, I better, uh, I better put my cover back over my head. So I put a cover back over my head. I was like, what the hell was that? And the next day I spoke to my mum. I was like, mum, what was this? this? This happened last night. And she said, that was a man that she'd known many years ago, a relative, you know, in the family. And I was like, seriously? So after that, I had a keen, like, spark of interest. And then it was uh, a good few years back, I met uh, Bex, who uh, stars on the show as well as a host on the main series, Ghost Dimension, because we've got two series. We've got Ghost Dimension and Ghost Dimension Flying Solo, because we had, a, like, a, a new baby yep. born, so Bex has got to look after the child at the moment. But uh, going back, uh, myself and Bex, we had a... Um, there's a few things we did. We used to go on ghost hunts, and one of them was one... Uh, Phil Wyman, you remember Phil Wyman from Most Haunted? Yep, I remember him, yep. <laughs> We went on one of his ghost hunts, and uh, it was a Halloween ghost hunt. And my, I remember myself and Bex, we turned up um, in Halloween costumes and fully makeup, and we were the only two pe- people that turned up. But we thought it was in the spirit that night, you know, for, for a Halloween ghost hunt. Yeah. And so we were like, this is really good, because really, real stuff was happening. We were experiencing stuff on the night. It was at Tatton Old Hall in, in uh, Nutsford. Oh, so I've we been came there. back. Yeah, it's a good place, a really it good is. location. When when I was there, we um, it was actually watching a Most Haunted Live. Um, All right. And I was in the audience for that one. And my brother, he was sitting up at the back, and he swears that he had, had someone pulling at his coat all night. Just You're right. Okay. on and off, yeah. So I, I'd love to go back there. Yeah, it is good. Well, we did that, and then we did a couple more, and then we um, moved into liverpool and we moved into a cemetery 
and we decided to have um, a Halloween party and we brought a psychic medium in and then um, we we thought this is really good and we like this this you know this field that we're, that we're entering here and so um, I, myself and Bex went out with a few of us and made uh, a pilot uh, four pilots for uh, not for the TV to be honest it was just for a bit of fun four TV pilots yeah and um we made those and so it was coming up to christmas and myself and back said what should we do with this and we said uh, you know what i said instead of buying each other a christmas present we'll put these shows on a, is a channel on sky where you can pay to put these shows on called showcase yeah and so we put these four pilots on and they did terrifically uh not good <laughs> so nobody <laughs> watched them um but we thought you know what we're gonna carry on and then we um Obviously met Derek and we did a, a series of past hunters and we uh, they aired on you know, your, one, of, one of Fox's channels called Your TV. It was twelve episodes and it was really good. It aired uh, number one on the channel and then we moved on from that and decided to develop Ghost Dimension and yeah. um, we've we think we did like twenty episodes for the first two series and then um, Bex got pregnant and with my child <laughs> and then. We moved, I said to Bex, well, while that's happening, people still want to watch it, so I'll continue to produce it and make some more. So we, we're carrying on at the moment making Ghost Dimension Flying Solo. Yeah. And I tell you what, we go to some of the, for well, all of the series, we've got an amazing crew behind us. So there's a lot of people behind the scenes like um, Jason Ottersfield. These people you won't know probably, but Jason Ottersfield, Lee Craven, Julie Staniland, uh, Roger Staniland, who we call Just Roger. And a load of different people behind the scenes that help us find locations. Um, we've got on Flying Solo, you would have seen like Paul. He finds locations as well and he investigates on the show. And uh, Jane, one of the camera ladies. There's a big crew behind us now that um, help out. We find all these different places and we research them before we go yep. to see if they are haunted. And one of Paul's things in the minute. Paul really wants to go somewhere and it's not haunted. <laughs> so we can debunk <laughs> it. And he's like, Sean, I really hope this one's not haunted. I'm like, Paul, it, it will be. And he's like, it, no, it won't be. It can't be. And then it, I, I, he'll go off and do an investigation. And I'll, he'll go, I'll come back and I'll say, how did it go? And he's all, summer happened. I'm like, well, that's good. It's really good. And he's like, yeah, but I didn't want it to be haunted. Yeah. So that's how we got into it. And you know what? We've not looked back because it's it's fun it's really good fun making the shows just like this radio um show that you make it's fun and it's just yeah good to, you know to do that's to it. make does, the show so does, fun does um i mean I, I watched an episode of flying solo earlier and you went to the a mine museum i can't exactly remember where Ashley, it was Ashley green yeah yeah um does the 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 guy you had there he that was paul was it yeah the bald guy and does he go, yeah, he, he goes to all the other places with you? He's all your yeah, resident he does, yeah. medium? Yeah, he does, yeah. Okay, cool. So he's not sidekick or anything like that. He's good at, with his technical equipment. Um, so we, on each episode, we try and bring in a different piece of equipment or we'll try and do a different experiment. Sometimes yeah. it doesn't work, you know, and the shame is if it doesn't work, it's pointless that we air it because it just doesn't, you know, there's nothing, you yeah. don't you see any dead air. Um, but yeah, it's, it's really good. And it's, but you know, one of the most amazing pieces of, uh, of equipment that we're using recently, um, yeah. and it's a device called the Alice Box. It's a piece. Of, it's an app, I believe, for the Android phone or the Android um, tablet. Yeah. And you know what? It's obviously do you, if you've heard of like the Ovulus, um, yeah. which spits out words, and they seem to be repetitive words. You know, in my opinion, it comes out with a lot of the same. This Alice Box is really good, especially if you're in a location. That machine doesn't know, that app doesn't know where you are, but it seems to pinpoint specific information about where, um, what, what stuff that could be related to where you are. So it's, it's really okay. interesting. I, I have really heard of the Alice Box before, um, mm. but I've never actually tried it, so I might, might give it a go, actually, and see if it does what it says on the box or something. But we was at we was at East Drive, thirty East Drive, yeah. and it was coming up with like things like demon, you know, and you're like, right, okay, we know it's it's supposed to be a poltergeist there, isn't it? Yeah. And we were like, right, and so and when um, we went to another place called um, uh, where was it, the Bait Hall? I think it was called the Bait Hall in Macclesfield. Mm. Uh, it, it came up with like a sentence on the screen, and it was like, right, you know, and it's like what and it related to the story of what was happening in that place as well yeah awesome so uh, yeah for I, me yeah 
I, I've got, um, I mean, I don't know if you've been there. Um, I've got an event in September at this location. It's the um, York Dungeons, you know, where the... Oh. Um, where they do the attraction, the York Dungeons. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, it's that building that we're going to <laughs> investigate. Um, I think it's the 30th of September. Um, yeah. So, yeah, if you're not doing anything that night, just come along. I might pop along, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, I've, I saw some um, pictures today from some, some people that I know that are in York. And, uh, you know, some there is some amazing places there, isn't there? There is. You know, I mean... You've even got the the gravestone of um, Dick Turpin, I think, around the corner. Yeah, from from the dungeons as well. It's, it's an amazing place, you know. Yeah, and is it is it the Fleece Inn or something up there? Or is it? Or is it somewhere um, else? The like? Golden Fleece, yeah, the Golden, the Golden Fleece. Fleece. Yeah. yeah, and I yeah. tell you, right, the food in there is absolutely phenomenal. It's food. really good. Yeah, it's awesome. It really is. Yeah, um, uh, it's but, my favourite place in the whole wide world, York City. I nearly yeah. moved uh, there. I love it I that really much. Like good, I, I, I like good food as well. So, and it, York is really beautiful, as you say. It's, it, it, I've been there before, not to investigate, but just, you know, on holiday. Uh, it's gorgeous, a gorgeous place. I, I think as well, you've got um, opposite the Golden Fleece, you've got like a little road that goes off it. Um, yeah. And it's supposed to be the old, I think it's the oldest street in the UK or something. Oh, wow. Yeah, the shambles. Okay. That's it. Yeah, that's just opposite the Golden Fleece. Yeah, Bloody shambles. Hell. Yeah, I, I know. I, as you can see, I know it well. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You should have moved there. Yeah, like you said. Well, wow. I I nearly did. I nearly did. Yeah, I was on the on the very cusp of it, and then um, circumstances took over, and I couldn't. But I was. Uh, yeah. Anyway, it's different. Yeah. Yeah. Different, different story completely. <laughs> well, yeah, we'll ask then. We'll ask. Yeah, because yeah, when we when we went to the York Dungeon to do a recce there, um, there was me, Richard Clements, and a couple of others from Trident, and we actually yeah. went to the Golden Fleece for dinner and had like mixed grill and it had come the size of the plate, uh, the size of the oh, table wow. even. It was fantastic, <laughs> and um, I did good. actually ask them whether or not they allowed events there. Um, yeah, but they would only hire out the top half of the oh. the inn. We couldn't have the bottom bit, which was a shame because well, I wanted all good. of it. But yeah, oh. never mind. Well, never mind. Yeah, totally. But at least it, you know you got to to go there and experience. It. I've not been there myself yet, but it's down there. You know, if I, when we we go away next in, a, in the next few weeks, if we if we head that way, yeah, then I'm definitely going to pop in. Especially uh, now that you said the food's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. no, the food is absolutely yeah. amazing. Really nice. Yeah. yeah oh, you can't God. complain about that. Um, and another, I mean, there, there are some places, obviously, down um, in Essex and Kent, because that's where I'm based. Um, yeah. You know, there, there's some <coughs> really interesting places around there as well. Um, I, I, I actually like going to a place called the, Kent, um, no, the True Crimes Museum. And your Hastings. Oh, is it good? It is. It is quite a small venue, but yeah. you've got real artifacts from famous murders oh, and wow. murderers and things. Um, you know, it, it's well, just it, it's, it's, it's amazing. They bring it an energy in as well. You talking about haunted artifacts and items we filmed in a location last week. Uh, yeah. called moviescape uh, rooms and that's a tourist attraction if you like okay and you um so you can turn up and in this particular one in stockport and uh, there's two rooms one of them's dressed up like the saw movie yeah so, you know the saw movie and it's a wheelchair in the middle you've got to escape out this room and find the clues and the other room is dressed up like a haunted house and you've got to find the clues and escape out this room and get into the next room yeah really really good and i'll give them a plug but you, if it's something new, you know, I've never really seen it. I know these things exist, but I've not seen what they look, actually look like. But this place was haunted. It was set in a, a haunted in a mill, which was haunted. You know, that was like a, a couple of hundred years old. But what was interesting with, about that, the, um, this place was, as well as the mill being haunted, there was a Bible um, that was in this building that they use as an item, a prop that was used in the uh, that came from the Am- Amityville. Uh, haunting all right and a radiogram 
from the Enfield uh, Poltergeist case. So, and those Fantastic. items were in there. Yeah, they're in there. And they, they, they source real items from the weirdest places. Um, some of them, which could be, uh, have attachments, if you like, from, from spirits. But what I, what I found interesting, I didn't get much from the Bible, but what we, um, well, I was expecting a lot from the Bible because we also have the connection to the Salem witches. But the, um, the Enfield Poltergeist uh, radiogram, we had a, a device on it called a, a REM pod, yeah. and it was going off. It was going off on the uh, on this device, and it was it was weird, really weird. But there was a lot of activity that investigation with REM pods and stuff like that. But yeah. the beauty of it was, it was all on command, so you could say set it off, and it set it off. You could say um, five, four, three, two, one, and it went and it stopped. And for me. I didn't, ex- you know, because it was dressed to be a movie set, I didn't think it was going to be that haunted uh, or have that much activity. But yeah. it did. It was really, really good. So what that then gave me, I thought, wow, you know, imagine going over and playing this haunted game, trying to escape out the haunted room, but you didn't know if it, if something was happening. Was it real or was it not real? You wouldn't know, would you? So it was a, it was an interesting location to investigate. Really for the, for the people that's listening and they don't know what a REM pod is, do you want to just explain? Yeah, it's you, if you save up on the back of uh, cornflake boxes, the tokens, you can send off. <laughs> 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 and that's me thinking, oh, cornflakes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. Yeah. No, the... the <laughs> A REM pod is a, a device, if you're listening and you don't know what it is, then you'll never know what it is. But what it is, it's a device that's used and it picks up electromagnetic energy, it's said, isn't it? So, and if, if a spirit goes near it or an interference of um, electromagnetic energy comes around it or stuff like that, it will go off. But the beauty is, if you put it next to a microwave, for example, it should stay on, yeah? Yeah. Um, because it's, it's, you're getting the, the microwaves coming out of it, like you would if you took a K2 next to it, they always stay on, yeah? If you do a baseline and you clear the area by checking that there's no electronic interference anywhere like that, then you shouldn't get it going off. Now, if you do get it off, going off, it's great, but it then if you can get it to go off and on with command, it's even better. So these REM pods are very expensive. I've not, um, I think I've bought one in the past, and I've Paul, we use a lot of Paul's equipment, but I believe they're really expensive to buy as well, aren't they? they Do you know? Are, any? Yeah. Are they expensive? Yeah. The, the paranormal equipment isn't cheap, to be fair. Is it not cheap? No. no. I know like a, a, a K2 meter, I believe, when we bought those, like 30, 40 quid, you know? Yeah. Some of it. Yeah. I mean, you can get cheaper ones that are like the cheap knockoffs and they're not the genuine article. You, you can get right. them quite cheap. But, I, I, you know, the genuine article is is a lot better it's yeah. it's uh, more calibrated and more accurate and it's yeah. at the right settings for the sensitivity and stuff where these knockoff ones okay they work but they're not yeah. sensitive as the genuine one um no. so they don't give a you know a, a, a rough reading i suppose yeah you know i i don't really go for the k2 meters because you know the the lights they indicate a range rather than an exact figure. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I well, go for the ones with the needles instead. <laughs> well, that's it. Don't buy the cheap one. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, yeah. Kerry, have we got any questions in the chat room tonight? Yeah, we have. We've got quite a few people in our chat room tonight. We've got Kev. Hi. He wants a shout out. So hi, Kev. Hello, Kev. Liam. Hi, Kev. <laughs> we've got Liam. Um, we've got Richard. We've got Steph. We've got Ashley. We've got Carl. Um, now, Ashley would like to know, this is Ashley Nib. he said, what would Sean consider to be the holy grail of paranormal evidence? There was, um, well, uh, well, it'd have to be an apparition, wouldn't it? It's always got to be, but you know, it would not just be like you see on some shows, you know, when it appears and disappears, yeah? It'd be, if you had that apparition, and I could film it, and have a conversation with it, and then put it on Ghost Dimension, that would be the best um holy grail for me you know if i could say you know are you dead and he said yeah i'm dead i'm the ghost you know that would be 
for me, the Holy Grail. I think that's what everybody wants, isn't it? Yeah, to see. it is. is. I mean, um, even mine, even mine would be a full-bodied apparition, like in Ghostbusters. You know, when they go in the library, yeah, and they go, get up. Yeah. You know, that that's mine. That would yeah. be my ultimate. Yeah, knowing you though, you'd send me forward to get slimed. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, and also if 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 on the show, Paul levitated. Um, I looked, and the, the, he was levitating. There was no strings or rope. For me, I would be like, wow. But then, you know, would it have just been a parlor trick <laughs> from Paul? <or> would it? <laughs> that would okay, be really and the, the second question um, is, what would Sean consider the best piece of evidence that he's captured or experienced? Oh, do you know, there's a few. There's a few. And um, one of them. Uh, was the main series with Bex and it was at um, Leeds Museum and we all know how cameras work you know with infrared yeah so yeah. if you're so Bex had a camera she was on the right she had a camera she was pointing forward Jane was um, behind me she was pointing forward Paul was on the left no camera so we had two cameras and um, they were, Jane we couldn't see it because we haven't got the infrared on, on our eyes or anything you know and Jane said there was a figure that flew off um, into this room room and this room what was on the right hand side of us was um a tomb for a mummified priest called nessie Amun, and it came right in front of the camera and passed us all and for that to have happened somebody would have had to have been stood in front of the infrared and it went it so this shadow figure went into this um tomb but it had an actual like hood you know so it was like really weird and if you actually see the the priest in his coffin in his tomb he's got you know, the, the remnants of a hood. So there was that. Um, and then it was, a, there was, can I tell you about two other things as well? Because there's a yeah. couple of things that always get me. One is recent, um, and I, which, and then there's one to do with equipment, and I'll just nip into that. But one's recent. I was in a place called the Old Market Tavern in Altrincham, and I heard a voice with my own ears, and you only can make it out so clear. And I, I, I'm, when I watched it back, I, I went, I heard a voice, and it went, rah, rah, rah. I thought, wow. When we played it back, it said, I never. So it was a voice that said, I never. Now, this place that we're investigating was a, a courthouse previously, and it, people have been sentenced to their death there. And so potentially, it was a lady, it was a, a female's voice. It could have been a, a lady that had um, been sentenced to her death and was pleading her innocence. That's what we think it could have been. Of course, it could have been something unnatural. You know, natural, maybe it was outside, yeah? Yeah. But it, it, it sounded like it was in the room when I heard it, and when we played it back, it was so clear. Now, the other piece of evidence which um, we caught, which was really good, we went to a place in Skegness called the Village Farm Open Air Museum. Have you ever been to it? I haven't, but I've heard a lot about it, to be fair. Um, it's there's a lot really of good. that go there. Yeah, it's really good. And we... Um, See, you know, when you capture stuff like this and the pr the press don't want this sort of stuff, so this is really good stuff, but then they don't want it because they want shadow figures and voices, yeah? So this yeah. stuff never gets out there. But um, Lee uh, was, me and Bex were investigating and Lee, the psychic medium that we had on the night, uh, said there was a guy and he was uh, he hung himself. This was true as well in this uh, place called the White Cottage, this uh, house there called the White Cottage. And he hung himself, but they said, I feel that he wasn't alone and somebody did it. Somebody hung him. I was like, all yeah. right, okay, you know, medium say stuff like that. And does it, is it true? We don't know. But I went in with the SLS camera and in the actual hallway where Lee had said this happened, a figure showed up on the camera as if he was being hung. And then a second figure appeared by the side of him. And I was like, whoa, you know, and for that to happen, I mean, it's one in a million, isn't it? You know, it could have, yeah. It, it, you know stuff like that i mean the mm. these sls cameras do throw up a lot of false positives but for that to throw up that to match what lee said i was like wow this is amazing yeah. and are these evidence. all on sorry sean are these all in your series on ghost dimensions yeah 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 so obviously because i've gone <clears> flitted between the both series that you know the, some of them are on ghost dimension and some of them are on ghost dimension flying solo yeah which you can watch free with Amazon Prime. So, and, you know, if you've not got Amazon Prime membership on telly, you can sign up for a 30-day membership for free. You probably sit there and watch them all. That, and then that's what I've done. I've, yeah. I've signed up for a 30-day free trial for it, but 
I'm going to cancel it after. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. No. What, um, you know, I, what, I, I kept asked because there's a good series on there called Lucifer if you, and American yeah. Gods. So if you do get a chance to watch them, they're fantastic as well. Yeah, I, I just have issues with the um, delivery service. That comes Is it with, really bad? It's, it's terrible. <laughs> Only you have experienced that, Paul. That's all I can say yeah, on that so, one. I, absolutely. Yeah. You know, the, okay. They're, their depot is like 10 minutes away from mine, but it took them 26 <laughs> hours to deliver something. It's like, really? God. I could have picked okay. it up. <laughs> Sorry, going on from this, we actually, this has triggered off some more questions, so I'm going to ask. Um, so Carl Hutchinson has asked, what type of cameras were you using and also what type of light were you using? Yeah. So um, depending on what you're talking about, we use the same setup all the time anyway, but we use Canon um, AX20 cameras uh, as the main ones and then these small uh, Panasonic um, HD ones. And we, we use some infrared, you know, that's built in on them. So on the cameras, we use built-in infrared. And on the main camera, the infrared's really powerful, so it does a really good job. That's the cameras that we use. Okay, thank you. And um, Ashley has come back with, is an apparition actually seen? I don't know. I'm not. I'm, <laughs> do you know, I can answer that, actually. Yeah. I, well, I know I can't answer it because I'd be lying, but I have seen something um, which we didn't film because it was not part of the show. And it was at a place called, have you heard of Newsham Park Asylum? in Little Yeah. Yeah. Well, we was in there and we, we were showing some people around and showing them how fantastic the venue was and whatnot. And there's a place at the top called the Naughty Boys Corridor. And uh, we was four of us in there. We had no torches, no mobile phones on us. And we were explaining that potentially a, a child died in one of the rooms on the right hand side. And then this mist appeared out of this room, really clear as day. And, um, it, you know, was it an apparition? I don't know. But what we did do, we ran. We ran so fast out of there because it was right <laughs> on the top of that building. <laughs> and if you've ever been, it's a long way down. You know, I, I've not down. actually been, no. Um, yeah. But my business partners have. Yeah. Um, they, they they went and they said it's actually amazing. So I'm trying to get them to book for next year to do that. Yeah. No, it's a really good place. A real, I recommend it. You know, I've done it a few times. It does fail to. It does disappoint sometimes, as any venue does. Yeah. But most of the time, it's uh, it's good. It's really good. Awesome. I'm I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. Yeah. Is it? Come. Go on. Kevin, is there any more questions on there? There is. Uh, we have another question, um, but I think it's a good time to take a break, and I'll ask the question after we come back yeah. from a break because it could be a lengthier discussion. Is all I can say. <laughs> okay. okay. Very, very. Okay. We'll, we'll play a break and we will be right back. Hello. Harry Price here. Good evening. If there's nothing myself and everybody else enjoy here on the other side more is the sit back and relax and listen to Parasearch Radio with its paranormal news, views and reviews from across the UK and beyond. Make sure to find out more about them on Facebook, Twitter and the World Wide Web whatever they are, to keep up to date with all their broadcasts throughout the week. And I hope you enjoy them as much as we do over here. Hello? Is anybody there? And welcome back. Um, tonight we're, we're talking to Sean Reynolds, who is the founder and creator and star of Ghost Dimensions TV series on Amazon. So... Well, right, Kerry, there was there, there was a question you were going to... Okay, yes. Mention. Now, Kev has asked a question. Now, earlier on in the discussion, you said you used different experiments and, and tried to use different things in your investigations. And he yeah. asked what your thoughts were on Ouija board experiments. Uh, to my personal... Uh, th well... I don't. I defend people. Maybe I don't know because my opinion is that it's a lot to do with who's on the board. So, um, because my, my own personal experiences on the Ouija boards are, it's a lot of messages that come through for people that want a message off a past, you know, loved one. And I've I've not yet to this day had anything rock solid on a Ouija board, and um, and it's. I've seen people get messages from their relatives and loved ones, but I've not seen anything come through rock solid that I could say, for my own opinion, that that was real. 
and that's I mean what what do you think Kerry oh sorry me yeah <laughs> um, I have to say I actually agree with you that it depends on who's on the board yep um, we was out on Saturday night and the people that were on it weren't getting a thing and then I get on it and it starts working and I don't understand why that would yeah. happen. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I don't know. I'd With like, my I'd focus like is better, experience. I don't know. Yeah, um, maybe it is. Maybe it's, it is. And maybe it might, I've not got the mind for it, of, for the openness of a Ouija board. Um, but I've not had an experience myself yet. I know plenty of people um, that have, uh, and I've said they have. Uh, but I've not had one myself that I could go, oh, that was, you know, a fantastic experience and but it validated anything for me mm. Mm. as i say it was interesting because so they couldn't get it working at all in any way shape or form but they were very inexperienced yeah. with that kind of work whereas i work very spiritually in the paranormal field i work that's how i work yeah. so for me i then get on the board and it starts working but i have that focus and i have that intention i suppose you would call it um now is that my personal energy making that happen is a possibility i'm not saying it isn't i'm not saying i'm channeling spirit or anything like that but it just seems strange and but that happened on saturday night and i witnessed that for myself and it made me think do you know what i mean because when i've been on it with other people that are used to using ouija and are used to um that focus we've had it working incredibly well whereas i say these people had never used it before so it's it is a interesting experiment when you get somebody who's never used it before and then it doesn't yeah. work and then you put your finger on it and then all of a sudden it does. You know what I mean? So yeah. for me, that was incredibly interesting. Um, and the first, think, the first yeah, time. <clears throat> it was the first time I've had a complete novice not get a thing and then me step in, Jump, as it were, yeah. and then it worked. And I'm like, okay, well, then that throws more questions up for me. Well, that, you know, it, I think you could be right, and I think it opens a bigger debate, is if you open yourself to different things, if you, you know, if you go into a location and you're not wanting anything to happen, it won't happen, but if you do, then you'll feel something, you hear something, because you're opening your, your different mind up, if you like, yeah, third eye mm. or whatever, and uh, yeah, maybe because I don't want and expect it to work, it doesn't work, you know, mm. but maybe if I, if I think it will work, it might do, but it, and then again, people say, well, you experience this stuff with equipment um, and I expect it to happen. So maybe because I'm expecting it to happen, it does. Mm. So, yeah, yeah. I mean, maybe it opens yourself up to it and it works that way. I mean, it, that's that's what it's all about, isn't it? Yeah, I, I think that does make sense to me. Even it, not just the Ouija board, but even on an investigation, if you get people, if you get a group of people that don't believe in it, then it's yeah. very hard work to get any activity going on around them. Yeah. Where if you get a group of people that do believe in spirit and they all interact and, you know, they, they're more relaxed about it and stuff. And yeah. you do, you end up getting more activity with the, that, those sort of people. So maybe it's the same sort of thing. Yeah, on the board. I think you're right. I think you're right, Paul. Yeah. Yeah, it does make sense. Mm. So have we sparked off any more questions, Kerry? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we have, we've gone back to tech a little bit. Okay. okay. Um, Carl is, is asking what type of light was used again, and was it battery-powered yeah. and what rubber? He loves his tech, does our Carl. Does he? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, um, so the lights, we're not using independent IR lights, uh, so they're not battery-powered by independent batteries or mains. So these are these uh if you need to google this camera so the can x20 has got a built-in ir um, the, and the panasonics we have they've got built-in obviously not fantastic but the uh the uh, Panas, sorry the canon camera that we use is it's when it's been used in investigation it's obviously battery powered you know so mm-hmm. it's uh it's not powered by mains because we haven't got the freedom to roam, roam around the building then if it's powered mm. by the mains so built in built in at the minute for that um, I know on uh, next week in, uh, it's next week's filming session we are introducing some IR because we the location we're going into again is really dark so we're just going to put some independent IR lights in which will be powered off battery. Okay, 
Now, the Ouija board discussion did trigger off a few comments. Um, Ashley has said the board is a medium that works in conjunction with the user's belief system that then helps them deliver the information when it's not being faked, of course. Um, and that was just in his opinion, just putting that yeah. out there. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Richard has said the Ouija boards do seem to take practice to get proficient at, so you do have to work at it. As well. Yeah, of course. Um, Kevin has said, I often get experience on boards, which is just a cheap table with a hand-drawn layout on top. You don't need to go for the expensive options. No, well, again, that's, I agree that's that. true, yeah. yeah. Yeah, I agree with that too. Get sharp. Now, yeah. <laughs> now, we have another question. Is Do others agree in regards to if you go into um, an investigation, negativity, negativ- neg- negatively, negatively yeah. even, Yep. Um, you won't get anything. So if you go in in a bad mindset, you're not going to get anything. I believe that, you know. I really do. I really Because I've witnessed it first time. If you go in and you're negative, you don't get nothing. But then again, you can, you know. But it's, if you go in somewhere in a bad mood and you don't want something to happen, you're going to block anything out. Yeah. So if something does happen, you're going to miss it. So if the door flies open and you're not focusing, you're just going to think somebody's walked through it, aren't you? Or if somebody calls your name, you're not, you're not going to notice because you're in a foul mood or you're just like, ah, this isn't going to work anyway. What, do you know what, though? Why the debate in that? If you're a spirit and you're wandering around or you, you, maybe it's a different dimension, for example, and you can see these people who are investigating and Bob over there is not happy and he doesn't believe, you're not going to go and speak to him, are you? Because people are people. Exactly. And so why do we need to change in the spirit world? You know, if we wouldn't go and interact with somebody who's not going to believe that we're there. Um, we're going to interact with the fun people who are investigating and want to be maybe uh, some validation or they want to be spooked or scared uh, or whatever. See, now, me, me you know, when, when it's my turn to be spirit, yeah. I'm going to interact with everybody. If they don't believe, <laughs> I'm going to have so much fun with them. They are, going to get, they are going to get the full ghost experience. They're going to be grabbed by the ankles, dragged off into the darkness up the walls, <laughs> along the ceiling, they're going to be absolutely pooping themselves. Don't blame me. <laughs> Don't blame me. It's going to be so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay, another question has come in. Oh, my goodness, the chat room's on fire. Um, do you think that certain people can block an investigation without necessarily being negative, but just shut the investigation down with their energy? Mm, that's good, isn't it? That's really good. I've not experienced it, you know, but um, do, could it happen? It would be worth a try, wouldn't it? I don't know. I've not experienced that at all, uh, you know, because normally when you you go out to do an investigation, people are wanting to do it, aren't they? You know, mm-hmm. you don't really get somebody that goes, that goes, I don't, I'm going to shut this down because I can't be bothered. Good question. I, I've sort of experienced that. Um, we used to have a guy on our team um and Kerry knows him as well his name's Danny yeah mm-hmm. um and he had he had the gift of mediumship he could he could do you know he could yeah you know sense things and stuff but he had a spirit guide um called Amber I believe and yes. this spirit didn't really like him doing the paranormal work so she oh, would wow. she would block the whole thing down she she would yeah. stop everything coming through, and you know we we tried so hard to get it to stop. Yeah, <laughs> it was like it was. I had to... firm words with a pair of them one night on an investigation because it was just yeah. un- it was unreal. Yeah. I had firm what... words with both yeah. of them. So and, it, and then and then it lightened and then it started uh, started uh, better. Yeah, I'm not oh. saying it. We had paranormal activity. I'm just saying that it, the energy in the place felt lifted Different. yeah yeah after i'd had firm words what a moody spirit guide you know to do that no she was she was quite yeah. young she was actually very young is yeah. actually yeah. um amber is very young and oh, that's why, she's yeah. um, very protective of her ward um i suppose and yeah. that that's what the vibe was she was very protective yeah. And when he opens, he is phenomenal. Yeah. So she doesn't like him to be too open because obviously when you go into paranormal investigations, you don't know what you're dealing course, with. Yeah. So that's, that's what the problem was. Mm. Um, she oh. was just being overprotective. Um, but yeah, Paul's worked with um, this person as well. And we've both experienced it with him. 
And yeah. it was, it was, I didn't believe it until I witnessed it. You saw it. You know, mm. I felt it because I say that's how I work. So, you know, um, yeah, I, I didn't believe it. And then I had a firm word with him and a firm word with her. And all of a sudden it just lifted. And I say, I'm not saying that the investigation, um, we got masses of paranormal activity yeah, yeah. because we didn't. But the whole, you could tell the atmosphere had changed. Yeah, yeah. From that point. And it was a lot more relaxed. It was a lot more easy and, and things were a lot better um, in that way. Um, Kevin has asked another question. What's the most convincing piece of EVP you have heard? The most convincing? Yeah. Uh, it has to, it recently, that one what I talked about before, you know, the I never. That was because EVP, you know, a lot of people do the EVP. They can't hear anything with their own ears. And it's, it's when you play the tape back or the, uh, the recorder. Yeah. Um, but when I physically heard it with my own ears, and the, it was a bit weird because it was muffled. Um, this is, if, you, if you've just tuned in and you don't know what I'm talking about, it's the Old Market Tavern in Altrincham. And this voice, I heard it, and I didn't know what it said. I just mimicked what I heard. And that we, when I mimicked it, it sounded like it, but in a, like a rah, 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 you know, type of voice. But it was, a, it said, I never. And it was a, um, it was a, the clearest one I've ever heard. It was really, really weird, you know. It was, but before yeah. it happened, there was banging and taps, and I'm going, "If that was you, do it again." And then the spirit goes, "I never." So with this end, I didn't tap or I didn't bang, or, or was it actually somebody that was uh, yeah. trialed in this in this place and was professing their innocence? Really, really clear though. It was so clear. Yeah, Frequently. so I, I can I can never really hear things like that. I mean, on the telly, you get. Um, on some of the TV shows, they'll actually yeah. put up in caption what it says at the bottom. And I hate yeah. that because it's now telling me what I'm supposed to be hearing. And you hear it. It's suggestion I, that though, isn't yeah. it? It's just because nobody knows what it is. Um, so they give you a suggestion. Yeah. And I, I don't mm-hmm. really like that suggestion stuff, but I, I can understand it to a point, but no, I yeah. can never hear what it's supposed to be anyway. Yeah. I'm just, it's very difficult for me. I don't know about you, Kerry. I'd prefer it if they didn't put it underneath what yeah. you're supposed to, because you can't help but read it as you're hearing it, yeah. because it's on the screen in front of you. You can't help yourself doing that. Yeah. So I would prefer it not to be, so you can draw your own conclusions from what was said. Yeah. And if it's a Class A, you shouldn't need the writing, quite frankly. Yeah. Yeah. Well, do you know when I did this? When uh, I did a, an interview on Australian radio last week, and uh, I think it goes out this Thursday, actually. Okay. Um, the the presenters didn't know what they were about to hear, and which was good for me because obviously the the producer of the show knew what it was. And when they played it, so they they just called like I think it was called Tingly Thursday. So they played this Thursday, and um, when they played it, they, they these Australians went. <gasps> oh, my God, that, that sounded like it said I never. And it, is that what it said? And I was like, yes. You know, you're like, <laughs> yeah. somebody heard it. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I was like, thank God they heard it. Yeah. So, what, it, was, what was your inspiration for um, Ghost Dimensions? Oh, to, you know, it's, it's all for Ghost Dimension. Yeah, for Ghost Dimension. It was the fact that I enjoy doing what we do. Yeah. Um, which was doing the uh, the filming and the, the shooting because as well as you also obviously when you're running a, an event like what you do and you you go on yeah. an event it's a it's an experience but when you're filming and there's such a buzz in the atmosphere and then when you capture some of it it's so interesting the we decided you know this is this is the way we want to go you know this is what we like doing yeah um, and then you can create a show and then when you create a show and then people watch it. And then you look and obviously you get negative feedback, but you know what? Not much on this. Yeah. And we're like, and it's nice to see the nice feedback in the, we have a lot of fans in America. And so when they watch it and then they're saying, oh, it's really good. And it's nice yeah. to have that satisfaction that you've made some of it, you've, you've edited it, you've produced it, directed it. I mean, I don't write the scripts, you know, yeah. uh, Bex writes the scripts, Paul writes the scripts uh, for the intros. Cause I'm hopeless at that. But um, when you see it all, come into one thing and you think, right, well, that's made now. And then it goes out and then you wait for everybody to watch it and say if they like it or they don't like it. And then you see the feedback from it. You think, oh, it's worth it. Have you, you, know, have, you had any, have you ever had any feedback from the other TV shows out there? 
Um, no, because you don't. Um, yeah, uh, yeah, only one, and that was like last week or the week before. But so, like, Ghost Adventures, no, because as you know, these people don't want to promote anybody else. Yeah. yeah? Um, Jason Halls is. I remember you saying his name. Is it Halls? Jason Halls from Ghost Hunters or Hawks? I I don't know. To be fair, I, I don't watch guy. these TV shows. No. <laughs> yeah. He mentioned something that we had in the paper, but that was it. Um, we get no feedback from them. And, you know, uh, it's because the paranormal world, as you know, um, yeah. being in it is so bitchy. And we keep Absolutely. out of that. I, yeah, I was just we, wondering we, whether or not they, they turned up, you know, some of the TV shows thought, well, actually, they're copying us a bit. Oh, you know, right, yeah. No, um, no, not at all. Because it's, uh, it's a format, isn't it? It's different formats than yeah. everybody yeah. else, you know. Well, we we also help uh, another show which is ch- uh, coming up there. It's uh, called Ghost Response, which is on Amazon as well, and we help them out and give them some uh, some stuff of how to make the shows a bit better and stuff like that. Okay. And, you know, it, they're a nice, nice, uh, nice group of people, which we awesome. which we help out. But but you know what, people, I can tell you this now. I mean, the the this is one thing that we, me, me, myself and Bex, we always say. We say, look, this paranormal world is really, really strange. And so you've got certain different things out there. And I don't want to mention them because they'll all start attacking me. But they don't mention us and they keep away from us. And nobody yeah. wants to speak about us. And I think, and um, you know, uh, I think it's just purely one thing. And I think it's just jealousy. Now, yeah. um, without sounding big headed or anything like that, because we're not, we're just down to earth and we enjoy what we're doing. It, there's a lot of jealous people out there and a lot of people that want to be famous they um, are. But, but you know what right these the people that do that and they want to be famous and the you know hats off to them go and do it but they don't do anything so the armchair famous people that want to go off and have this opinion and they want to be in the spotlight but they won't go out there and do something about it yeah you know but at the same time do you really you're not going to get famous through the paranormal you're really not. If you want to get okay. famous, go and join an acting school. Go and be yeah. on EastEnders. Go and be on Coronation Street. Nobody gets famous in paranormal. You look at like Most Haunted. If go outside of paranormal, who knows of and Carl? Nobody. You know yeah. who knows Zap Baggins? Nobody. You know it's a specific industry, and for those people in that industry, and so it's a weird one it's really weird so you know and i think because we enjoy doing what we're doing and we don't get involved in any of the the uh shenanigans that go on in the paranormal world we get ignored so but yeah. you know what i like it like that i don't i don't I mean it's a bit to be like. honest i i don't watch any of the paranormal programs um yeah. it was only because we was talking to you that i actually watched um a couple of your episodes today of course yeah um and you know i I watched a little bit of a most haunted one quite recently, um, yeah. and I I got to about thirteen minutes and I had to turn it off because it annoyed me so much. But yeah, your shows yeah. were actually quite watchable, and I enjoyed oh, thank them. You. Yeah. It, yeah. It, they were quite good. Um, there, there there was you know a couple of times I was like oh oh really um, yeah <laughs> but, yeah of course yeah um, because I'm not, I'm not a believer in orbs. To be yeah. honest, uh, you, know, you see I'm, an orb you know, and it's like, no, that's I'm dust. the same with you. With an orb, is it dust or is it is it a, an yeah. insect? You know, I try. We try and debunk. You know, if we if we left them in, the show would just be an orb show. We'd have to rename it Ghost Orb Dimension. Yeah, but, <laughs> and I, I think there was a, there was a couple of times in there that um, yeah. there was the the light anomaly, and it, it was I quite amusing because you could. I, I don't think you could say the word. A bit of, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> was, I was trying not to say. I, it, I think yeah. I think you said yeah. like anomaly and first yeah. time, and then you you sort of mucked it up the second time. But it just shows <laughs> that you are human. You know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. I, I yeah. enjoyed it. It was really good. Yeah, I remember Sorry. the front. The, oh, go on. Sorry, we have uh, the chat room is asking millions of questions. So, um, right, Carl again has said. You know where you saw the two apparitions, the one where it was hanging and then the guy next to it, you said? Oh, yeah. Where was that capture, where was that capture captured and what so location it, was it? Yeah, so it wasn't um, well, it wasn't an apparition. It was on the SLS. So, you know, the SLS is Structured Light Sensor Device. Okay. But it, it, was, um, it was at the Village Open Air, I have to pronounce this right, the Village Farm Open Air Museum in Skegness. And it's a really, if I'm, I might be telling a bunch of lies here, but because um, I don't know what the high, I'm sure the higher price is really cheap as well. So it's really good. So if you can go, you can go. I think it's maybe 10 or 15 quid a person or something like that. 
Cool. But it's there's a big house there. I want to say a big house is really big. Yeah, there's loads of different places in there. It's like a village. It's it's like a village. It's a village, a real village, but sectioned off as a museum. Really good. Cool. And something touched my leg in that place, and Ooh. then the REM pod went off, and I was like, whoa. And normally, if I'm going in a place like that and I'm getting a bit freaked out, I'll make sure that somebody's outside, yeah? So if I need to go, cut, get me out of here, somebody just please come in and just see what the hell's going on. Well, they left me, right? So <laughs> I, I'm in this room and someone grabbed my leg and I'm thinking, and I, and I know the lights are a bit dodgy, yeah? So you could, I'm going to get electrocuted touching the lights. So I'm, <clears throat> I'm like, whoa, someone touched my leg. Then Rampod goes off in the other room. And I'm scuffling to find the light switch. And I'm like, right, get the lights on. And they quickly go and peer. I was like, to say, what the hell was that? And nobody was there. I thought, you sods, you left me there. <laughs> and to deal with these demons, yeah. Um, does Sean believe that human consciousness survives death? Or does he have another explanation he prefers to explain paranormal source? Okay, I'll break that into, I, I, yeah, I'll go into, I'll try and make that really small as possible. I do believe, yeah, because I believe that the body's made up of tiny atoms that vibrate. And so I think the mind works like that as well. So when you die and you decompose, you, you're still there. You know, you, your atoms are still vibrating. You turn into soil and dust. But the mind, yeah, the mind is, is, so it, is uh, run by electric. So all the nerves create all the electric in your mind. They're all little tiny atoms as well. So I don't see why when you die, your mind can't continue. And maybe you go into a different dimension. Or maybe you just float around and you, you're looking around and thinking, whoa, what happened there? You know, and that's why we, we're ghosts and we're just like bumping into things. And, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, I do, I do believe it, it survives it. Yeah, I do believe, but only because of the way your body's made and the, the way the body works. Okay, so what in, in what in your view, what is the most active location you have ever investigated? Yeah. Oh, it's, there's a few. There's a good few. Um, it, it's going to have to probably be um, the Galleries of Justice recently um, that we did. And I've been there before and then I went back to film the show. And, you know, I thought it'd been done to death for that place, but it's still active. Um, in the, if you've ever been, there's like a cave thing. Uh, I think it's called the Oubliette, Oubliet, something like that underneath. Yeah. Oubliet. And in there... It's just such a nasty feeling and stuff. You see things with your own eyes. You know, you see shadow people with your own eyes in there. And for me, yeah, I didn't. The door shut. And you know, when we was in there, the door slammed shut. I don't know if we filmed that bit or not, but I remember it happened. And I was like, "What?" And I knew everybody was in there with us. And when we went to the door, there was a brick by the door to um, to keep it open, and the the brick had been kicked and moved away. I was like, "Oh my god!" Unless it was a security guy. You know, it had to be something paranormal. But, yeah, one of the most active. But then, you know, a, a lot of places we go to are, are active. But when you have you been to around, Have you been to Shrewsbury Prison? I haven't, no, no. Because no, that place to... is quite active. Is it, is it active, yeah. yeah. I went to Ruthing, Ruthing Jet, and we could hear footsteps at the very top, you know, walking around. You know, yeah, yeah. prisons, it interests me. I know we've been invited to another one. I can't remember where, what it's called or where it is, but we've been invited to another prison somewhere. Awesome. And I can't wait to go. I'd oh, blame you. I'd be over the moon to go to another prison. That'd be good. They're good. They're really good. <clears throat> yeah. Kerry, any more questions? Um, you said there's oh, loads. my goodness. Honestly, the chat there's room loads, is on yeah. fire tonight. Yeah, the chat room awesome. is actually on fire tonight. Um, we've had a question about what is your view on out of body experiences? Oh, why are these kind of, these are deep questions. Oh, Honestly, geez, this is yeah. the kind of caliber we have on Parasite. We have Radio. very deep people. <laughs> yeah, this is deep. I am. Um, may, I'll do, maybe one day I will ha I'll have one and I'll come back and tell you how it was. <laughs> That's my answer to that one. Um, <laughs> But do I believe it happens? Yes, I knew a guy that had one and um, he told me all about it and he's, he was in a car crash and he had, well, he, he told me, it felt like an out-of-body experience. He said he had this euthoric um, feeling and he, he could 
he, I, remember, I can't remember if he said he saw a light or, or not, but he, he remembers like just floating and feeling like that was he could do anything and there was nothing, no worry, no more worries at all in the entire world. And he had died for a couple of minutes, and then the paramedics brought him back to life. And bang, you know, he was back in his body, and he'd come back to this whole horrid place <laughs> where we go all earth. But yeah, mm-hmm. um, so I do believe it can happen. Yeah. I don't want to experience one, though. No, thank you, Richard, for sharing the YouTube watch channel on um, our chat room as well, because people have been asking, can you see it anywhere other than Amazon? So um, somebody has shared your YouTube feeds onto um, the chat room as well, so people can catch up um, with you. That's nice. So thank you for that, Richard. That's uh, very handy. Saves me a lot of um, looking. (laughs) Yeah, definitely. But you're on Facebook as well, aren't you? Yeah, so we're on um, are we on Facebook. I don't know the official link um, because I can't remember. It's all right, I've got it. Yeah, you've got it. <laughs> um, we'll share yeah, that in the on, chat room. We're on there, so you can go on and you can like it. And we're very responsive. So there's, there's myself and Bex, and there's a whole team who will respond if you message or comment or anything like that. Normally it's myself and Bex, or if it's a deep question about a, a location or anything like that, if we can't get back to you straight away, somebody else will. So we do, and we like speaking to the people that message us. We really do. Fantastic. And we're on Twitter and Ghost underscore Dimension, and we've gotten. We don't know how to use it properly, so if you want to follow us, you can follow us there. And I, we I, did you know that what? earlier. I, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know anyone that knows how to use Twitter properly. <laughs> oh, neither do I. No, the Americans know how to use Twitter yeah. properly. We're st- in the UK, we're still it's trying like, to catch up with that. I was getting used to it the other day, and then the update today, and I was like, cheers for that. Yeah, now I'm <laughs> getting used to this new layout. Yeah, yeah. so I, I don't know. I, I don't fancy being known as a twit. Like, that's, that's the... Yeah, that's it, or a tweety. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, any other questions? Because we're coming up to the end of the show now, so... Oh, we are. No, um, so are they've all quietened down. Uh, okay, so awesome. No, they've all quietened down. They've, they've, all, quietened they've down. all quietened down, yeah. Um, I think you've answered all of their questions incredibly well. So thank you so much for doing that for us. Oh, no problem at all. No it, it's problem. been an amazing show, absolutely. Um, we, we'll have to have you on again. Maybe if you come up with another um, another show concept. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Maybe we can yeah. plug it for you. That would be really good. And Absolutely. Def- definitely speak to Kerry afterwards in regards to advertising. Oh hell yeah! <laughs> yeah. She said to me, so you can. She said she'll do it for free. So oh, no, she yeah, didn't. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> didn't she didn't yeah. say that. <laughs> no, you you were channeling the spirit at the time, and you, I no. said it's free. You went yes. No, I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure I said five hundred pounds for a minute. Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> That's that's an expensive minute to be fair. It's yeah. <laughs> worth it though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But again, also thanks to everyone that's in the chat room tonight. It it just amazes me that we get so many good people in the chat room, and it makes it's all part. You know, they're all part of the show. Yeah, it's a good bunch of people in the chat room there. That really very deep, as we found out tonight. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Apparently, apparently we have deep listeners. <laughs> I'm going to have nightmares tonight. Yeah, I'm going to go to bed. I'm, you'll be phoning me next time. So how was it? I said I had an out of body experience. I was everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I say have, have a bit of everything. Go for it. Yeah. Why not? Yeah. Um, the incubus and succubus. That's next. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. yeah. Yeah. You should go down to the ancient around me, and that'd be a good show. It would you well maybe I will one day yeah definitely definitely yeah. it's a big I, distance I've been for there. me though is it I, I, is it good yeah it is it, and you know I I was having an argument with the spirit and the, the team we went there with um they they were they never knew how I worked and we got out and oh, wow. as as we was communicating with the spirit it was like go away don't want to, oh, you know. can I just and stop was, you go on guess what I'm mean, sat here I'm talking to you. Yeah? yeah, and the door has just opened. Yeah, now if we had, you wouldn't have heard it, would you? Because we, we were thinking, but it just opened. No. How weird is that? Very strange. 
But go on, tell uh, us about this. Um, yeah, so we, we sort of to this spirit on the Ouija board, and it's like, are you happy with us being here? No. Do you what? You know, are you happy communicating with us? No. Yeah. And it was like, so you don't want to talk to us? No. Oh, well, God. go away then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't put it that politely, though. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And they were, and the rest of the team that was there were like, you can't talk to spirit like that. And I'm like, well, why not? It don't want to talk to us. It's being quite rude. So I'm going to be rude yeah. back. You know, if, if he wants to be polite and respectful, then I'll be polite and respectful back. I treat it like talking to someone face to face, you know? Yeah. That, that's how I use the board. Um, and at the, at the end of the day, if he wants to go, he wants to go. I'm not stopping it. Yeah. You know, and it, it was just shocking them. It's like, oh my God, you can't talk to spirit like that. Why not? He's talking to me like that. <laughs> yeah, he's talking to you. You talk the same back. It's a personality, isn't it? Exactly. Um, uh, yeah. It just shocked them, really. Such a rebel. I am. Absolutely. But anyway, <laughs> we're, we're, we're sort of running over now. So Yeah. We do have to say goodbye. So thank you, Sean, for joining us, and we'll have no to problem. Thanks for having me. Yeah, we'll have to have you on on again. It's been brilliant, and thank you thank for you. the chat room, and thank you, Kerry, as well. And you know, I'm even going to thank Steph for jumping in on the chat room as well. <laughs> 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 yeah. So thank you, everyone, for joining us, and we will see you all again next week. 